we're at a point in time coming off of a, a wild Saturday of college football. People are consistently peeking over at this board. He actually would not be my number one overall pick, nor would I bet him to be the number one overall pick. I think you got that next wave of NFL players, which is so enticing, which when you see Jaden Daniels coming to the NFL and you go, I can get something like that with a guy with just as good an arm. Pro football today, only on Sports Grid. It's a new era in CFB to start off this year, put on full display. My take on this game is simple. I, I know some people will be upset about it. Good riddance to the Pac-12. Can you do it in terms of the week to week to week? I don't see a pathway for this team to miss the college football playoffs. We want to make sure you have those best bets in the entirety of our betting cards. That was the thinking! But he had that he program was already going there. there! Only on Sports Grid. If you're sliding DiVincenzo to the what? Uh, obviously, Terrence Jennings Jr., that is actually dynamic uh, offensively and defensively. So we'll see how it works. I think it's a little bit of a work in progress. Do both teams win? Yes. I don't think at the end of the day, Minnesota could have afforded to keep Cat, Rudy, and Ant for that amount of money. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. I think the Washington Commanders are one of the best bets to win it all, or at the very least win the NFC. Their offensive line, I do want to say one thing. It's very average. The coaching is good. They're getting good coach for, good coaching from Bobby Johnson, their line coach. They were from the Giants, but they've kind of overachieved. Let's call it like it is. Daniels has taken them up. Look, that division's not very good, and they could very well win it over the Eagles but and the Cowboys. They're not a Super Bowl team. Newswire, only on sports. Good morning. Welcome to Newswire here on Sports Grid. Happy Monday. Thanks for tuning in to our show here today. Boy, do we have a lot to recap from college and pro football over the weekend. One of the most exciting Saturday nights you could ever imagine in college football. We'll review that as well. Vinny Iyer will join us courtesy of Sporting News. Also, Adam Kaufman with the latest in the NFL. Adam Kaplan is with us on the show as well. So everything that happened in the National Football League will recap for you. Also, of course, we have guest contributors, as always, from Sporting News. So stay with us here on the grid. And happy Monday to those of you who are getting ready for your workday, or maybe some of you actually have the day off. Could be a holiday for some of you today. So thanks for tuning in to the show. All right, in case you missed it last night, we had some Major League Baseball, not much of a game. Had some NFL, oh, probably not much of a game either, but let's go through it here. First of all, the Cincinnati Bengals, late last night on Sunday Night Football, dismantled the New York Giants' best defensive performance for the Bengals all season long. There's no question about that. They've been the worst defense in the NFL, but they finally stepped up. And did a good job. They didn't really need to do much. The Giants only mustered seven points in the game last night with the Bengals picking up the win. So Cincinnati kind of stays in the hunt. Giants, of course, taking a step back. Let's hear from Zach Taylor, the head coach, who, like I just said, is giving his defense a lot of credit. You know, our defense kept us in it. Our offense was was a little sloppy at times tonight. Um, but there in the fourth quarter when we needed it, everyone just stepped up. And everyone did their job. Everybody finished. I thought special teams put us in some really good positions with some of those punts. Um, you know, and then defensively, obviously getting the ball back and offense finish it with the touchdown. So no better way to do it. Um, start building on that and, and hopefully we can string some wins together. I think you can name a lot of people on that defense that really stepped up. Um, you know, three, three turnovers on downs, the turnover and just a lot of big plays, you know, and they got some, and that, that's kind of how their offense operates. They, they got a good efficient operation. I think their quarterback does a really good job. And but our defense stepped up at the right times and and uh, held them to what seven points I think it was yeah. Meanwhile, the Giants situation just continues to get worse. Of course, they were playing without Malik Neighbors, who may play this week, but of course has missed the last ten or so days due to a concussion. So up against it was of course Brian Dable with his team last night. But after the game, not a lot to smile about when you only put up a seven against the Bengals. All right, tough tough loss. Um, Thought our defense played very good football. Uh, you know, missed a you know missed a quarterback run early. 
on a rush lane, but they played they played winning football um, to hold those receivers to, to what we held them to the past game. Uh, you know, I think Burrow had about 50 yards rushing, uh, but hats off to, to the way the defense played. Missed two opportunities in the kicking game and then didn't score enough points offensively. Um, and that starts with me. And, you know, it's it's hard to win games when you score seven points. And that's the reality of it. That's probably a number of things, Dan. I'll go back and, and watch the tape. You know, I thought we had some opportunities, um, you know, throughout the game, um, you know, whether it be run, whether it be pass. Um, you know, we turned the ball over down there, you know, on that drive, which was a, a good drive, and to come away with no points. And then you know, I think five of 15, somewhere around there. Now we were aggressive on fourth down because um, I thought we needed to be against this offense. But um, just couldn't generate any any explosive plays we did. We had the penalty. Um, and then other than that, we didn't hit many explosive plays. Giants offense just ugly in a word. And it has been like that for the majority of the season, although they did play well against Seattle a couple of weeks ago. All right, uh, last night's game, open and shut case, really. When it comes to National League Championship Series Game 1, they'll play Game 2 today. Mets are going to have to score some runs eventually. But again, are the Dodgers ever going to give up a run? They've now had 33 straight scoreless innings. And, folks, that's not a typo. It was 9 nothing last night if you didn't catch the game yesterday. So the Dodgers take a 1-0 lead in the best of seven series. Uh, kind of feeling like the Mets may need to win one game here in L.A. to stay in this thing because the Dodgers right now are playing their best baseball of the season at the right time. All right, let's go back to the NFL here just for a minute. Uh, Jacksonville uh, was just one of the worst performances you could possibly see individually from a lot of different players on Jacksonville, dropping the ball, fumbling the ball all Sunday morning long in London. And now they've lost Travis Etienne Jr. They're starting running back, although it looked like he was getting outplayed by their backup, Tank Bigsby. Uh, right now it looks like Etienne is out for at least one week, maybe two. They're saying week to week. The Jaguars are headed nowhere, staying in London for this week's game against the Patriots. And also earlier this morning, a report from ESPN coming out that Hassan Reddick, the holding out player for the New York Jets, although he's never played a game for them, has switched agents. His agent is now Drew Rosenhaus, and he'd like to get a deal done either with the Jets or somewhere else. Yesterday in the NFL, the Dallas Cowboys are the gift that keeps on giving in terms of blowouts. When they lose, it's pretty ugly, and it was again yesterday. Lions laughing their way through a 47-9 to victory over the Dallas Cowboys. They were three-point favorites. In that one, the Cowboys haven't won a game at home this season. In case you missed it yesterday, Aiden Hutchinson had a very serious leg injury that is going to cost him the season. He already had surgery last night, and, of course, he's one of the best defensive players in the NFL, best defensive player on the Lions for sure. Great game between the Ravens and Commanders yesterday coming all the way down to the wire. Ravens win 30-23. to Lamar Jackson threw for 323 yards. Jaden Daniels had a nice game as well. Needless to say, uh, Ravens, since starting off 0-2, they have won four straight games. And also the Eagles needed to go all the way to the end against the Cleveland Browns. They win 20-16. to Cleveland has now lost four games in a row. And I think I saw a stat that says they're the first team in NFL history to play six games and not score 18 points in <laughs> the first six weeks of the season. That's kind of crazy. Uh, Tampa Bay's offense explodes. They go to New Orleans. They get 51 points. They ran for over 200 yards. They win 51-27. to 27. Remember a few weeks ago when the Saints were 2-0? and And everyone was saying, yeah, they're legit. They've lost four games since then. And Tampa Bay has looked a lot better. By the way, that was probably the most impressive offensive performance for Tampa Bay in years, maybe even going back to before Tom Brady at quarterback. All right, uh, interesting scenario playing out yesterday between the Chargers and Broncos. Not the game because the Chargers dominated. The, the Broncos pretty much start to finish. But their head coach, Jim Harbaugh, exited the game with heart flutters is what they're calling it but he returned to the sideline the chargers beat the broncos by a final of 20 to 16 but it really wasn't that close chargers were two and a half some places they were three point favorites but harbaugh pretty cheeky after the game saying that he uh, had to go into the medical tent but it was much ado about nothing yeah every, everything ended up turned out to be okay I, I deal with this uh i guess minor uh it's called atrial flutter and uh I got into an episode today with it, and then uh, doctors checked me out, and it got it got back into uh, sinus rhythm, normal rhythm. So uh, came back. Yeah, I've, I've, I've had a couple of ablations, um, one in 1999 and one in 2012. The uh, and I always remember the one in 2012 because it was during the Monday night game, um, Colin Kaepernick and the 49ers versus the Chicago Bears and. And Colin had a great night that night. And uh, 
Yeah, I knew I was in it during the game and uh, after the game, got checked out and ended up having to have a ablation for that one because it didn't go back into rhythm. But 2-0 with 2-0 uh, with uh, in arrhythmias. <laughs> not something to be uh, excited about, I would not think. All right, uh, Packers dominated the Arizona Cardinals uh, yesterday. Jordan Love threw four touchdown passes again. Green Bay wins 34-13. to The Atlanta Falcons just handed the ball off to Tyler Algier and B. John Robinson constantly over 200 yards on the ground. They beat Carolina final 38-20. to And uh, also the Houston Texans, Went up very big on New England. Uh, Patriots made a lot of mistakes in this game, fumbles, interceptions, et cetera, although Drake May did make his debut and throw three touchdown passes, but relatively speaking, game was not close. 41-21, to 21, the Houston Texans finally starting to play some good football. All right, new AP tolo- uh, college football poll is out. Number one team in the country, not a surprise. It's Texas, so guess who's in at number two? Of course, it's got to be Oregon after their win against Ohio State on Saturday night. Penn State's three. Ohio State barely falls to four. Georgia went to five. By the way, Army undefeated, Navy undefeated, both ranked in the top 25. Meanwhile, Texas, Oklahoma, Red River rivalry goes to Oklahoma 34 to three. Crazy game Saturday night. We don't have enough time to get into it, but Oregon ended up beating Ohio State. Uh, LSU beat Ole Miss in overtime, and Alabama barely beat South Carolina. National League Championship Series game two is coming up tonight with the Dodgers minus 142 on the money line. And of course, ALCS game one is this evening between the Yankees and the Guardians. And we'll be right back. football today on sports grid odds in motion trying to see what lines have moved throughout the week never felt more comfortable in the set than i do for this year i'm uh, ready i'm just getting angry. the hot takes are going to be here all uh, long, people. what in the world is going on in miami dog it's not particularly anything to shy away from just because many people are on top of it hot take, hot take. i think this line is asking you once again to take the Orleans. pro football today only on sports grid if you're sliding DiVincenzo to the one, uh, obviously Terrence Jennings Jr., that is actually dynamic uh, offensively and defensively. So we'll see how it works. I think it's a little bit of a work in progress. Do both teams win? Yes. I don't think at the end of the day, Minnesota could have afforded to keep Cat, Rudy, and Ant for that amount of money. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. I do think they come back, and I think they win this game, but they've got to do it decisively. I think they've got to get that confidence back because they went out there, and like I said earlier, Kentucky almost beat Georgia. Kentucky almost uh, did beat Ole Miss, and I think what you're going to see in this conference, if you don't play well and you're a top-10 team in the SEC, you're going to get knocked out by one of those top-25 teams in the SEC uh, if you're not ready to play. Powered by SportsGrid. Welcome back to Newswire here on Sports Grid. We got Vinny Iyer in the house from Sporting News. We'll get a preview of tonight's game between the Buffalo Bills and New York Jets. Also recap some of the things we saw over the weekend. Vinny, great to be with you here on the show. Thanks again for coming on. Uh, Sunday Night Football, well, I mean, didn't deliver the most exciting performance last night. Let's be honest. Although going into the game, uh, you know, a lot of the pr- projections had this as like a, you know, 31-30, 30-26 kind of game. 
but neither the Bengals or the Giants offense really showed up yesterday. What happened? Yeah, it was strange because both teams were dealing with some key injuries defensively and both teams have been red hot offensively. So maybe some adjustments being made, maybe just the way these teams have kind of not been living up to expectations early in the season. Maybe they had to just meet on the field to both uh, figure that out. So uh, the Bengals survive here. They were fortunate that that last fumble went out of bounds. They could have uh, been a little bit differently ending here if that had not happened but very interesting developments here in week six all the favorites pretty much won most of the favorites i think covered so (laughs) it was very unusual based on the results of the first five weeks that that we are pretty much looking at all chalk here in week six yeah that's that's the way it definitely went down a lot of favorites winning and on the road by the way on sunday as well Meanwhile, Daniel Jones just can't get out of his own way on primetime games. 1-14 and 14 now on the season. It's been a rough go of it, without a doubt. All right, now the uh, Chargers played the Broncos. This, this game definitely, to me, is one of the reasons why you can't sometimes look at the point spreads and just you know understand what they mean. Because going into the game, you're looking at it. It's like, okay, Denver's playing better football. They've won a couple in a row. Now they're going back home. They take on the Chargers. Chargers are three-point favorites in the game, and guess what? They deserve to be, probably even bigger than that. I mean, this was almost a total domination in this game, and to be quite frank, Vinny, right now, I'm not really sure what to make of the Broncos. I think the Chargers are going to be above 500 thanks to Harbaugh. It's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be fun, but my guess is they're going to win more games than they lose going into the last week of the season with a shot to make the playoffs. Yeah, they have a pretty consistent formula. They're going to run the ball. They're going to play defense, and have Justin Herbert make a few plays during the game. And now Justin Herbert's foot is healed up. I think you saw them open it up a little bit in the passing game with Herbert, which is a good sign for them going forward. They do get the Cardinals here in a very favorable matchup all around for their offense on Monday night in that second Monday night game in week seven. So they're going to keep going that way. I think they were well prepared coming off the bye to take care of the Broncos as well. And the Broncos have to turn around and play on a short week. Sean Payton is returning to New Orleans. The Saints just gave up almost uh, 600 yards of offense to the Buccaneers. So it's going to be an interesting kind of gut check you know, time for both teams because they both started hot. And now you're looking at two teams likely not going to make the playoffs. We'll see who's in a worse shape coming out of Thursday night. Yeah, I, I would agree. And by the way, the Chargers schedule, I mean, on paper, relatively easy. Cardinals, Saints, Browns. Titans. I mean, it's the NFL. So at the very least, they should go two and two, I would think, out of those four. Some would look at it and say it's automatic four. No, we know that's not the case. And we know they're not going to win every game. Uh, But you would think they would win more than they lose or at the very least be in the same position in a month from now. So yes, their odds are very good to make the playoffs this year. Meanwhile, Vinny, uh, we're going to get a a new look team apparently tonight with the New York Jets. Now, I, I will say this. Uh, historically speaking, there are a lot of things working in the Jets' favor tonight. Number one, they're a home dog on Monday Night Football, which we know is amazing. And the second part of this is that, Vinny, as long as I can remember, betting on sports and the history of sports, when a team fires the coach, the players show up that week. It may be a Band-Aid, and it may be temporary. We saw the same thing last year when Pierce got hired by the Raiders, and we've seen it throughout the years. Coach gets fired, new guy comes in, players are like, see, that's the reason why we didn't play well. It wasn't us. I don't know. I expect the same thing to happen tonight, Vinny. I just can't go against uh, the historic trend here. But the Bills now down to one and a half point favorites. They opened up as almost three point favorites. Some spot this is even one. It could be a pick them by the time the game goes off tonight. Yeah, it's not only just the change from Robert Sala to Jeff Ulbrich, but also changing the play caller for Aaron Rodgers, which is significant here because Todd Downing has a history of wanting to use the running backs more going back to Derrick Henry and the Titans, which is aligning with what you need to do against the Bills. You've got to run. They've been at 75 to 80% passing, which should not be happening with Brees Hall and Braylon Allen in the backfield. So I would think there's an overcorrection there with their scheme. And the Bills not only struggle to stop the run, they also struggle in coverage against running backs. So I would expect them to feed the running backs a lot this week really take pressure off Aaron Rodgers from throwing deep because that's what the matchup dictates. That's what the philosophy of the new coordinator says. So it all lines beyond the inspiration of uh, playing under new head coach. Yeah, it does, Vinny. All right, well, enjoy the game tonight. Thanks again for coming on Newswire. We'll catch up with you again later in the week. Thanks again.
Or thank you. All right. We'll get to some basketball notes here. But before we do that, one quick note from the National Football League. Uh, head coach uh, Mike McDaniel of the Miami Dolphins says Tua Tungavailoa will not play out of the bye this week against the Indianapolis Colts. That line is now shot up, opened up two and a half now, I, I think up to three and a half or four Indianapolis Colts at home. Although they do say that Tua will return at some point this season in the NFL. Now in the NBA, Joel Embiid, I mean, his status right now for the beginning of the season has to be somewhat in question. He missed another game and he's going to miss the entire preseason due to left injury left knee injury management he says he'll be close to 100 percent when the season begins coming up in a couple of weeks meanwhile jerry west becomes the first three-time inductee to the basketball hall of fame Nismith basketball hall of fame of course and he's a, a memorial hall of famer as well also in the wnba we're paying attention of course to the wnba finals the new york liberty even up the series 1-1 with the Lynx. brianna stewart goes 21 points, eight rebounds, and five assists. So we'll keep an eye on that as well. When we come back next, it's time for the Sports Grid Sound Off. We will talk a little college football and also talk a lot about the big injury in the national football yesterday. Not something that you want to see any time, and, and goodbye Fox not showing this injury over and over again with Aiden Hutchinson suffered a broken leg. The update this morning is he did have surgery on it already. And it shouldn't preclude him from playing in the 2025 season, but he will miss the remainder of 2024. All right, we'll take a quick time out here on the show. We'll have the sound off coming up next, so stay with us here on Sports Grid. Pro football today on Sports Grid. Odds in motion, trying to see what lines have moved throughout the week. Never felt more comfortable in the set than I do for this year. I'm uh, ready. I'm just getting angry. The hot takes are going to be here all uh, long. People. What in the world is going on in Miami, guys? It's not particularly anything to shy away from just because many people are on top of it. Hot takes, hot takes. I think this line is asking you once again to take the Orleans. Pro football today, only on Sports Grid. If you're sliding DiVincenzo to the what? Uh, obviously, Terrence Cheney Jr., that is actually dynamic uh, offensively and defensively. So we'll see how it works. I think it's a little bit of a work in progress. Do both teams win? Yes. I don't think at the end of the day, Minnesota could have afforded to keep Cat, Rudy, and Ant with that amount of money. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. I do think they come back, and I think they win this game, but they've got to do it decisively. I think they've got to get that confidence back because they went out there, and like I said earlier, Kentucky almost beat Georgia. Kentucky almost uh, did beat Ole Miss, and I think what you're going to see in this conference, if you don't play well and you're a top-10 team in the SEC, you're going to get knocked out by one of those top-25 teams in the SEC uh, if you're not ready to play. Powered by Sports Grid. Welcome back to Newswire here on Sports Grid. Some fun college football on Saturday night. It was worth staying up for. Lots of games coming down to not only the last minute, but the last play of the game. Let's get the very latest. It's time now for the Sports Grid Sound Off. Well, the Colorado Buffaloes 
four point favorites, three and a half in some spots. I mean, the bottom line is if you took the Buffs Saturday night, you won. But it should have felt a lot better than that. Felt like Colorado probably could have easily won that game against Kansas State, but their defense couldn't stop the run and couldn't stop the Wildcats late in the game as well. So it puts uh, Wildcats higher up in the top 25. And now uh, the Buffaloes, in order for them to make the college football playoff, probably have to win out and then some. Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, after the game, talked about some of the breakdowns on defense and, of course, losing their Heisman Trophy Award a possible candidate, Travis Hunter, for an extended period of time. We had an opportunity tremendously at the end of the game. Um, we took a shot. Uh, we didn't come up with it. Game over. But we shouldn't have been in that situation whatsoever. Um, the drive before that, defensively, blowing coverages, we, we, we blew some things there because the running back should never be wide open running up the sideline in a situation like that. Then they take a shot and hit us deep, uh, which is not indicative of who we are. Um, losing, certainly losing Travis and, and uh, Jimmy and uh, others was tremendous because they're a vital part of our team, the vital part of our identity. They're a vital part of who we are. So that that – that took a, a uh, took a blow. Took a took. A, we <laughs> take your time, coach. That took a lot out of us. But other guys had the opportunity to step up, and they did. So I'm proud of them. Hunter's injury status will be updated this week. Meanwhile, Penn State's Nittany Lions went to USC and won that game in the last minute final, and they win. They were six and zero on the season. One of the best seasons that Penn State has put together. In a long time, James Franklin talked about how the team has not played perfect. They've played a lot of close games. But in this day and age of college football, who is blowing anybody else out? Just how the whole game went. You know, the offense, you know, started out a little slow. The defense really did a good job. Then then, uh, the offense started going and the defense needed the offense to have their back. And then special teams, I thought number one, you know, we went into this game with a ton of respect for him. We always take a certain player or a certain scheme and we say, this guy can't be a factor in the game. All-American returner and impactful wide receiver. And I thought we did a good job in terms of punt location, kick location, and coverage. So that was big. It was, it was awesome in there. And, and to me, that's what it's all about for me at this point in my career. I just want to see the players uh, achieving their dreams and, and having fun and being rewarded for all their hard work and the same thing with the staff. So that's – that's what it's all about for me at this point in my career. I want to see them achieve their dreams and goals. So really, really cool for me. Uh, it's going to make for a great ride home. It's going to make great, uh, make for a great bye week. And, you know, there's a ton of things that I think we're going to be able to learn from this game. And we need to learn from this game because we're far from perfect, but we're also six and oh, and one and oh this week. And uh, we're going to take it and run. So thank you. Appreciate you guys. Yeah, good start for a Penn State, without a doubt. Now, unfortunately, one of the bigger stories that came out of the NFL yesterday was a key injury. One of the best defensive players in the NFL, Aiden Hutchinson, is going to miss the remainder of the season with a broken leg. The good news is he'll be back for 2025. He had surgery immediately after the game yesterday. Let's weigh in on the very latest, how the Lions recover and what it means for their future as Casey Hudson has a breakdown. All right, football fans, it's nearly a wrap on week six of 18 in the NFL. And one of the teams expected to make an appearance in Super Bowl, that's right, the Detroit Lions put a complete pounding on the Dallas Cowboys, but it came at the expense of defensive end. Aiden Hutchinson taking up a big injury, was rushed to the hospital in Dallas, had to have emergency surgery for a broken tibula, so we will not see him again this season. But he was sitting at defensive uh, player of the year odds at plus 275 at a number of books, top of the charts, top of the conversation obviously a key piece of this Lions defense but with that being said Tom Vecchio and myself were chatting about it on pro football today do the Lions make a move before the deadline do they pick up to add back to their defensive line because while you can't replace a guy like Hutchinson and what he means to this Lions team they might have to bring something to the table to make sure that they secure their defense moving forward to continue to be Super Bowl contenders so let us know you guys' thoughts and obviously recovery prayers to Hutchinson yeah, I think right now the Lions have a couple of different options moving forward. One is to move some players around. Certainly the other is to sign someone. We'll be right back.
right here with you on Pro Football Today on Sports Grid. Odds in motion, trying to see what lines have moved throughout the week. Never felt more comfortable in the set than I do for this year. I'm uh, ready. I'm just getting angry. The hot takes are going to be here all uh, long. People. What in the world is going on in Miami, Doc? It's not particularly anything to shy away from just because many people are on top of it. Hot takes, hot takes. I think this line is asking you once again to take the Orleans. Pro Football Today, only on Sports Grid. If you're sliding DiVincenzo to the what? Uh, obviously, Terrence Cheney Jr., that is actually dynamic uh, offensively and defensively. So we'll see how it works. I think it's a little bit of a work in progress. Do both teams win? Yes. I don't think at the end of the day, Minnesota could have afforded to keep Cat, Rudy, and Ant with that amount of money. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. I do think they come back, and I think they win this game, but they've got to do it decisively. I think they've got to get that confidence back because they went out there, and like I said earlier, Kentucky almost beat Georgia. Kentucky almost uh, did beat Ole Miss, and I think what you're going to see in this conference, if you don't play well and you're a top-10 team in the SEC, you're going to get knocked out by one of those top-25 teams in the SEC uh, if you're not ready to play. Powered by SportsGrid. Welcome back to Newswire here on Sports Grid. We've got Adam Kaufman joining us to talk some NFL. One quick note from college football. CBS is reporting Florida Gators starting quarterback uh, Graham Mertz out for the season with a lower leg injury. So, wow, uh, DJ Lagway will take over for him for the rest of the year uh, for the Gators. All right, so now let's get to the latest in the NFL where there was no quarterback change uh, this week for the Pittsburgh Steelers, but there was one for the Raiders. So Adam and I will sit down and, you know, break this thing down. And honestly... Uh, you know, not great quarterback play, I would say, from either quarterback in this game between the Steelers and Raiders. The funny thing, Adam, is that if you if you were not a uh, you know reality football fan and only a fantasy football fan and really didn't pay any attention mm-hmm. to anything else except for Justin Fields' fantasy numbers, you would think this guy is fantastic. I mean, every week he's rushing <laughs> in touchdowns. I mean, his numbers never look good. You watch him play. He's almost getting picked like every time. Steelers keep winning, and his fantasy numbers keep racking up. It's fair, but I I think the most important thing that you just said right there was the Steelers keep winning. So all of these people that are out there just waiting and wondering when is Russell Wilson going to get his opportunity, let's remember that Mike Tomlin is not a sentimental head coach. You know, there are some coaches out there that may have from the very beginning said Russ won the job for week one, and yes, he was unavailable to play as a result of the injury, but when he's back, it's his. He'll step right back in. No, no. Justin Fields has done well enough. I know that the numbers are maybe more impressive than the eye test, as you noted, but he's leading this team, or really the defense is leading this team, but he's not hurting this team, and they are winning. They are winning games. They are sitting there at the top of the division, and so so long as that continues, because I personally, I was someone that came in with lower expectations for the Steelers this year, and that wasn't so much Tomlin and the supporting cast. That was specifically Russell Wilson. I didn't like the signing, the acquisition. I didn't think he was going to be a good fit for the team at this stage of his career, even for the culture in the city of Pittsburgh. I just thought it was a bad move. And you know what? We may never see it play out because so long as Justin Fields continues to perform at this level and the Steelers perform at this level, then that's all that matters. Tomlin will keep rolling Wilson out there as the backup quarterback, and that'll be it. There won't be a change. He has no urgency to make a substitution here just for the sake of ego or something like that. This is right now Justin Fields' job, and so long as the results continue, it's not going anywhere. Yeah, I mean, I think you have to wonder if Wilson has played his last down in the NFL. I would agree. I I would see absolutely no reason to switch, even if the Steelers were to lose a couple of games in a row. It doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, Okay, so the, the Panthers hung with the Falcons for the first half of this game. And, you know, I I really, I would say, Adam, of all the teams in the NFL in a very short sample that I've been impressed with the last couple of weeks, it has been Atlanta. It does seem like all those Mm. pieces are starting to come together. 
They're running the ball very well. All of a sudden, Pitts is now involved in the offense. Cousins just looks for London over and over and over again, which is, you know, sort of what he did in the past in Minnesota, whether it was Diggs or with Jefferson. Uh, you know, I, look, Panthers are one of the worst teams in the NFL, so I'm not going to sit here and jump up and down for Atlanta. But in a division that all of a sudden seems a little bit more competitive with Tampa Bay playing well, I have to say I am impressed with what I've seen from Atlanta recently. So, look, I, I've come on on a Monday or Tuesday on on this show or elsewhere and, and talked football in response to the weekend. And I've done this before, and yet I feel like I need to do it again so much as, you know, not just the, the viewers and listeners, but for myself as if I'm looking in a mirror. This needs to be a public service announcement. Can we stop? fooling ourselves into investing in the Carolina Panthers. You know, I did the show yesterday, in-game live pro football today with, uh, or, or pro football game day, I should say, with Scott Wetzel and Joe Madden. All three of us, we were on the Panthers plus six and a half. And then obviously you look at what happened. It was the Falcons pulling away in the end, even though the Panthers did lead at points in that game. It's just week after week after week, you see a number that's just appealing enough to say, maybe this will be the time that the Panthers sort of figure it out, don't necessarily win, but they keep the game close because look at what the dogs have been doing so far this year. And yet they're the one dog that never seems to figure it out. And they are one in five. So I I'm done. I'm done putting my money on Carolina. It it's just, you're lighting it on fire. But with respect to the Falcons, yeah, I mean, it's if so long as Kirk Cousins is healthy and largely throughout his career he has been, I know last year was an outlier, he's generally a very durable guy. So as long as he is out there on the field, it doesn't really matter if he's going to have tunnel vision for Drake London. If he gets himself open, which he did, especially in the second half yesterday, Kyle Pitts, like you said, when they figure out how to utilize him the right way, which has been a very up and down process throughout his career, he is a good tight end, more of a wide receiver than he is a tight end. And then, you know, in terms of that running game, it's it's not Bijan Robinson alone. Tyler Algier had a great game yesterday. And so Cousins, who cares about the age? Who cares if he's got Michael Penix breathing down his neck or anything like that? This is a, it's a good team. It's a good Atlanta team. Scores a, a a bunch of points. Yes, allows a bunch of points as well. But they've figured something out here where they've won a few straight games. And again, they are sitting tied for the top of their division. I like the way they're playing. Yeah, I do too. And I think you're right. It's kind of funny with Carolina. It's like that's the one team that gets points on a weekly basis that you're like, ah, oh, you know, maybe they'll hang in there. And then in the end, something bad happens. And they lose by a lot. All right. Uh, speaking of money, I'm pretty sure when, well, first of all, the books got uh, killed yesterday, probably first time all season long. About time. Yeah. yeah, this was it. No, they got killed yesterday and they got killed more on this game than any other game this season. The Bucks were the most bet team in the NFL all season long. Every contest, every hmm. bit of money, 90 something percent. Everybody faded the Saints with them changing starting quarterbacks. And you know what? At halftime, it looked like, ah, you know, the Bucks are going to win on this one. But uh, the Saints were fraudulent after they were 2-0. and They're even more fraudulent now. All those performances of scoring 50, they're now, they're now giving up 50. The Buccaneers have found a way to run the ball big. But, uh, you know, as I said, Adam, and, you know, you doing shows here, you know uh, as well, is that you couldn't find anybody to take the Saints. And uh, books naturally are going to get beat bad on that. Funny you say that because I was on the Saints yesterday. <laughs> Obviously, it did not work out <laughs> in my favor. Uh, you look, for a little while, sort of like we were talking about the Falcons, and the Panthers, for a little while, it looked pretty good. It, it's, you know, especially with a, what was it, like a 20, 27 point second quarter there up. for uh, New Orleans. Yeah, I mean, the Rattler and company, they just wouldn't go away. It's just that second half, it, it largely belonged to the Bucks and Mayfield and Godwin especially went nuclear. That fourth quarter was when they really pulled away. I mean, even going into the fourth quarter, if you were on the Saints, you were still in a position where you thought, all right, like this could happen for me. And then it's like a 20 to nothing advantage for Tampa Bay in that fourth quarter to put him away. And so this Saints team, you know, 2-0 and to start the year, four straight losses at this point. It's, it's hard to uh, – it's little apples to oranges because, as you noted, it was Rattler yesterday and not Derek Carr. But this team – always seemed a little fraudulent, didn't it? You know, going back to the start of the year and, and just blowing out teams and scoring 90 points through the first two weeks. This can't continue, especially if they run into defensive issues, which is exactly what has happened. Uh, you know, as far as the Bucks go, I think they're, I just kind of look at them the same way I looked at them last year. They should be a playoff team, or at least in that playoff conversation, there's a lot of offensive talent. There are a lot of holes on defense. And they're going to score at will. They're going to be in a lot of these games. They're going to be in a lot of high-scoring games. 
Yeah, it looks like a team to fade for me, to be honest, after that performance last week. Uh, but, you know, my, my dog was uh, your guys, New England. And, you know, I felt, mm. you know, from from the coin flip, I felt that was a bad choice. Like, milk was a bad choice. All right, uh, Jets <laughs> and Bills. Jets and Bills. Uh, th- this is my favorite Monday Night Football game of the season. I hate to say it. It is, though, the coaching bump. College, pro, I always bet on the team that fires the coach and a Monday night dog at that too. So I got the jets tonight plus a point and a half. So I'm with you. And honestly, at this point, you may as well just take the money line, right? I mean, when it's plus a point and a half, you you have to, you know, maybe go 50, 50 or whatever it is. And it's not just the coaching bump. You know, the, the bills have been a little up and down and let's not forget, even though very clearly so of the jets, which is why Robert Sala is no longer there. Aaron Rodgers and, most of this, the vast majority with Green Bay. But Aaron Rodgers is 7-1 and one against the spread, 6-1-1 one and one straight up at home as an underdog in his career. All right, Adam. Great stuff as always. Have a good week. You too. Pro football today on Sports Grid. Odds in motion. Trying to see what lines have moved throughout the week. Never felt more comfortable in the set than I do for this year. I am uh, ready. I'm just getting angry. The hot takes are going to be here all uh, long, people. What in the world is going on in Miami, Doc? It's not particularly anything to shy away from just because many people are on top of it. Hot take, hot take. I think this line is asking you once again to take the Orleans. Pro football today, only on Sports Grid. If you're sliding DiVincenzo to the what? Uh, obviously, Terrence Cheney Jr., that is actually dynamic uh, offensively and defensively. So we'll see how it works. I think it's a little bit of a work in progress. Do both teams win? Yes. I don't think at the end of the day, Minnesota could have afforded to keep Cat, Rudy, and Ant for that amount of money. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. I do think they come back, and I think they win this game, but they've got to do it decisively. I think they've got to get that confidence back because they went out there, and like I said earlier, Kentucky almost beat Georgia. Kentucky almost uh, did beat Ole Miss, and I think what you're going to see in this conference, if you don't play well and you're a top-10 team in the SEC, you're going to get knocked out by one of those top-25 teams in the SEC uh, if you're not ready to play. Powered by SportsGrid. Welcome back to Newswire here on Sports Grid. Adam Kaplan, our Sports Grid NFL insider, is with us to go over some of the results in the NFL yesterday and things moving forward as well. Adam, great to have you back here on uh, Newswire. Let's jump right into it with the limited time that we have you. Let's take a look at the Eagles and Browns yesterday. The Eagles, a game they absolutely had to win. The narrative this past week was, oh, off a of bye week, going to come out flying, going to come out swinging. Uh, I don't know. You know, it kind of held held serve, I guess, against the Cleveland Browns. If the Browns had any other quarterback playing in that fourth quarter, I think they may have lost this game. In fact, the Browns also lost their starting running back in this game also. But look, your record is what it is. It's the NFL. And for the first time all season long, what we thought was going to happen, Adam, happened in the NFL this week. It was the first time all season long. No huge upsets. Almost yeah. there was almost one though with with uh, Cleveland I thought yesterday. Yeah, I you know it's interesting when you look at you look at the point spreads. 
always tell Pharrell this, that you, it starts around week five or six. The first three or four weeks are really difficult to call games. I typically don't call games very well early on. And I look at the way that I picked, I picked almost every favorite. And naturally, they we finally had a week, as you just talked about, with a favorite swarm. Now, I do like Philly to cover that number because, as you mentioned, Cleveland's terrible. Now, I'll say this about Deshaun Watson. He's a bad quarterback. Okay, He's a bottom five, bottom three quarterback. But he did make some throws yesterday. He definitely did. Uh, he was under pressure. Uh, they were down at a third. The Browns were down at a third string center. They were down to, they were down actually three safeties for this game. So naturally, from a personnel standpoint, when you're trying to break it down, you see a huge advantage for the Eagles. Nick Sirianni is now 4-0 after the bye, but he's under fire here in Philly, man. He the, the fans, he's getting into it. Mm-hmm. By the way, I don't know if you're, I don't know if you're aware of that. Yeah. Got into it with the fans, which is kind of embarrassing for an NFL head coach, but they found a way to win. They've got a very favorable schedule. I felt all along they'd be 11 win team. I'm going to stick with that. I think some people believe that I'm out of my mind thinking it'll be 11 wins or more. They have one of the best schedules in the National Football League, probably the NFL's hardest last season, which would explain why they were 10 and one. Then they, then they would want to lose six out of seven. But yeah, I, look, it's not a good division. Okay. The Cowboys are absolutely terrible. I mean, we can, we've talked about them in a minute. But the Eagles are the best team and, and probably the NFL's weak division. Yeah, I still am thinking Washington is going to be there in the end. I thought they played great yesterday, too. But you mentioned Dallas. Uh, you know, what's interesting, Adam, is that when we talk about the Super Bowl and you, you know, people like you, people like me, and we say, you know, give me a few teams to potentially win the Super Bowl. We start, you yeah. know, oh, maybe it's San Francisco and, you know, maybe it's Kansas City. And then we reach down. Maybe it's Baltimore. I mean, it's it's possible to say that the Lions are still an underrated team to do that, to go to. I mean, I know that the, the FanDuel Sportsbook would tell you otherwise, that they're about the fourth or fifth best odds to win it all. But I got to tell you, Adam, I mean, we're, we're talking about, about Dallas, and I know they stink. Okay, fine. So they're going to win some. They're going to lose some. They're going to be 8-9, and 9-8, nine, nine and 7-10, and ten, whatever they are. Yeah. Lions are great, man. Like, the Lions, when they got you down, they don't stop. It's just a really – impressive team second year in a row that they're doing this and and i think people should be talking about them more you're right you're right we don't but we're gonna have to talk about him now because of the hutchinson injury which is devastating he'll be out for the season tibia and and, and uh tibula fractures not only is he their best defensive player you could argue he's the best player on the football team and not having him is devastating they, they see this offseason craig they talking to them about what they wanted to do with their football team. They wanted to address their defense, specifically their secondary, okay? So they started their corner. They drafted two corners. So they think they've solved that issue, and by the results so far, you, you could agree that that's, that was a good move. But they didn't add any pass rushers, and that's the problem now. So you take Hutchinson out of the mix, they're going to have to address the trade market. They're going to have to do it, and they're going to have to pay, because I agree with you, based on what they've done so far, Jared Goff is playing phenomenal football. Jameson Williams having a breakout season at wide receiver. Arguably the NFL's best offensive line, best running back tandem of the National Football League. Great offense, maybe the NFL's best offense. But defensively now, you take out a premium defensive player, edge rusher, a leader like Hutchinson out of that lineup, and it's it's going to be devastating. It, it's going to be hard. I always worried about their pass rush even with him. Now you take him out of the mix, it, it, it's a problem. But now the thing is, can they withstand it? That Now going forward, we have to look at them differently, though. We absolutely have to look at them differently. So if you're playing future numbers now, I got to put the Niners above them. I know you look at the Niners, they're three and three. I get that. They had a great win. They dominated the Seahawks on the road. Uh, I expect them to get better, but their issue now is getting McCaffrey back. He's still week to week. They're hoping he can practice for the next two weeks, but not having him is a game changer for the Niners. We all know that. Yeah, it is. But maybe there's an edge rusher on Cleveland or Las Vegas that can make their way to Detroit at the trade deadline. I see a couple of rumors out there, but who really knows? Uh, All right. uh, Commanders. Ravens, uh, Washington played great, man. Like I, I know their defense failed in the end, but that's what happens when you go against Derrick Henry. Uh, Baltimore barely covers this number. If Washington converts on a late third down and scores a touchdown, they don't cover the number. So I, I take away from this, and at least listening to all the Ravens after the game, Adam, talk about the way that Washington played. I mean, they, they got some really high praise after this game. Ravens are once again a Super Bowl contender. Washington, is, I believe, is going to not only be in the playoffs, but has a chance to make some noise, too. They do. Now, they, look, when you get elite quarterback play, and, and Jane James, I give him credit, it is so hard as a rookie to play in Baltimore. This is not a vintage Baltimore defense or secondary is a problem. But when you when you really look at Washington's issues, it, it's, it's putting talent around Daniels, right? Not a great offensive line. They need help with 
opposite McLaurin. That's going to be something we'll address in the offseason. Not a lot of talent on defense, but they play super hard with great energy. Knowing Dan Quinn a little bit, it doesn't surprise me with the energy that they play. It's been a great story. They're they're fun to watch. I, I, it's funny when, when I had to pick the game on Friday, or I guess it was Thursday. I, it was six and a half. I'm like, man, I think it's going to be close. I'm going to lean towards Baltimore because I can't see Washington upsetting Baltimore uh, in, in Baltimore for, for Daniel's first time there. I just don't see it happening. But they play their butts off. I, I, I agree with you. It's a good call. They're very, very competitive. And look, would it surprise me if they won the NFC East? No. But this team's kind of in a, in a – not a rebuild, but they're in a retooling of that roster with the commanders. Yeah, still favorites, by the way, to win the NFC East. They'll play – They'll play Are Philly they? in that thing. Ooh. Yeah, plus 120. That'll get worked out. They'll two will play each other, and it'll, that'll be determined. Uh, any lean on tonight's game at all? I've been pretty strong on the uh, Jets here. I feel like you fire a coach, and, and you know, players just all of a sudden say, yep. see, it was him. I, 100% I heard you on the, on the segment before I came on here. You and I are thinking the same thing. I, I saw I, – I felt that way as soon as it was changed. Me too. It made yeah. a change, and I'm expecting him to post the of energy. He's like, yeah. All right, Adam, thanks. Pro football today on Sports Grid. Odds in motion, trying to see what lines have moved throughout the week. Never felt more comfortable in the set than I do for this year. I'm uh, ready. I'm just getting angry. The hot takes are going to be here all uh, long, people. What in the world is going on in Miami, dog? It's not particularly anything to shy away from just because many people are on top of it. Hot take, hot take. I think this line is asking you once again to take the Orleans. Pro football today, only on Sports Grid. If you're sliding DiVincenzo to the one, uh, obviously Terrence Jennings Jr., that is actually dynamic uh, offensively and defensively. So we'll see how it works. I think it's a little bit of a work in progress. Do both teams win? Yes. I don't think at the end of the day, Minnesota could have afforded to keep Cat, Rudy, and Ant for that amount of money. Betting above the rim, only on Sports Grid. I do think they come back, and I think they win this game, but they've got to do it decisively. I think they've got to get that confidence back because they went out there, and like I said earlier, Kentucky almost beat Georgia. Kentucky almost uh, did beat Ole Miss, and I think what you're going to see in this conference, if you don't play well and you're a top-10 team in the SEC, you're going to get knocked out by one of those top-25 teams in the SEC uh, if you're not ready to play. Powered by SportsGrid. Welcome back to Newswire here on Sports Grid. A few minutes left in the show before we turn it over to the early line. We'll get into some results in college football. Also, one NFL head coach having an issue with the fans and one NFL quarterback having an issue with TMZ. Yep, that's what we got covered here for you in this edition of Last Licks. Really smart play pulled off by Oregon against Ohio State. It didn't really affect things, and obviously we cannot show you video of this because of copyright issues, but I'll try to walk you through it here a little bit. Uh, With about 10, 12 seconds left in the game, and uh, Oregon up and Ohio State trailing by a field goal, Oregon did something that I think a lot of college football teams are going to do in the future. To avoid a bomb for a touchdown, they put 12 men on the field. And so essentially, they're willing to take a penalty here with the idea that no matter what, they do not want to give up a score. 
and it also runs time off the clock. Folks, this is it was a great idea by Oregon, and it did run time off the clock. And essentially, Ohio State's quarterback forgot how much time there was on the clock. He ran the ball the next play, and the game ended. What they did there didn't affect the outcome necessarily of the game, but the competition committee in college football has got to look at this <laughs> because there's no possible way that at the end of every game, what teams can do is just throw 12 men on the field for a Hail Mary. Uh, you know, they break it up because of 12 men, penalty on the field. They get to do it all over again with no time left. I don't know. Really genius move on the side of the Ducks. But I don't know. I, I think there's got to be some other, like, stiffer penalty here. How can they just allow this to happen? It's like a flaw in the matrix, I guess, so to speak. All right, now let's get to Nick Sirianni, head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. They win the game against Cleveland. That was not good enough. Not good enough for Nick Sirianni on Sunday. Nick Sirianni thought it would be a good idea at the end of the game to go after some fans in the stands. Not Cleveland fans. Philadelphia fans? I mean, they probably were saying some heinous stuff about him. Who knows? It's the NFL, though. Like, you you have to kind of expect this. And I know Sirianni, this offseason, was one of those ones that says, hey, I'm not going to get so worked up, and I'm going to take it easy on the refs, and, you know, and it sounds like I want to enjoy life a little bit more. I mean, what was possibly said to Sirianni there? To me, I mean, I, I mean, I, he didn't say anything post-game. He just said that they were just, like, mixing it up. But what could – any, any – person possibly say to get the head coach to come over to the fans and yell at them in their own stadium i know the pressure is building up it was not a clean game by philly yesterday and i understand i've been to philly i've been in that park when i've seen the team that i'm covering play against philly fans it ain't easy and it ain't pretty but these are your own fans man the last thing you want to do is get them upset it seems like Sirianni may have done that yesterday Meanwhile, in case you missed it, after we were off the air, it was interesting on Friday. Something that I wanted to bring up, saw it uh, happen on Friday. But Dak Prescott, who's up against it and you know clearly not playing his best football, uh, apparently deci- decided in Dallas or wherever he lives, Arlington, somewhere in Texas, uh, to uh, destroy his house and rebuild a new house, which is not unusual at all. And in fact, I'm guessing that this is happening all over the country with people like you, people like me, but we're not like starting quarterbacks in the NFL. And so Dak was asked about this at his media session on Friday. And I guess TMZ were the ones who initially broke this. Does it mean anything? Does it mean you don't want to be here? I mean, et cetera. And Dak was not happy about this, basically saying, I'm here uh, not only to play football, I'm here to have my football covered and not have my house being demolished so I could build a new one covered. Really upset about this. I got to tell you, um, he's right. He's absolutely right. This is not something that's news. But when you're wearing the star on the helmet and you're the highest paid quarterback in the NFL, unfortunately, some of this has got to come with the territory. But I do feel for him. And I always did wonder when you're at that level where people say, well, you're making 50, 60 million dollars a year. You should be able to take it. I mean, your personal life does seem to be want to be personal, personal. And it does give me a little bit of ick to hear that uh, we're reporting on him you know, just building a new house kind of, and asked about it too, at a press conference, but I get the people are doing their jobs. I've been there too, covered a million press conferences, had to ask some uncomfortable questions as well. All right. Thanks to Adam Kaufman for coming on the show. Also Vinny Iyer of Sporting News. And also thanks to Adam Kaplan, our sports grid insider for coming on. Uh, also want to remind you, you can catch the early line coming up next. And then Pharrell uh, coast to coast at three o'clock Eastern. I'll be on his show talking a little baseball around five o'clock Eastern. If you want to see me, then I will be back on that show. Thanks again to Luke, our director and our producer, Frank. I'm Craig Mish. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Monday. We'll be back with a recap of Monday night football tomorrow on our next edition of Newswire. Have a great night, everyone. See you then.